And now it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock God Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, do we have a fun show going for you today. Pete Gray, a little under the weather. He's out of the studio this morning, but myself and Corey are going to be hanging out, talking fishing with you, and talking fun. And man, is it going to be a good one. Always fun with Ron Lane from Fast Lane Kayaks and Mark Johnson from Hobie. We're going to be talking all kinds of great stuff, boats and paddle boards and Hobie history and a lot of fun. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. This is Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. For quality- Quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers, but Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. Good morning, anglers. This is Bob Hoots of Costa Sunglasses. Costa is introducing its new Pro Series. This high-performance sunglass series includes Costa's legacy frame styles for a finely tuned fit with minimal light intrusion. Each Pro Series frame is designed with vented, adjustable nose pads, sweat channels, and side shields for improved comfort while on the water. Combined with Costa's 580 polarized lens technology, the new Pro Series allows captains, guides, and anglers to see what's out there. Visit your local Costa dealer or visit us online at costasunglasses.com. Got to meet the sun too. I All think. right. Good morning. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cook Up. Ron just over there having a good time. <laughs> We're yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we have so much fun. Ron's like a you know, Ron's a fixture in here in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Cook Up and you know and, and it's just a always just always about having fun and always a part of the fun that we're having here whether it's traveling or fishing or kayaking or stand-up paddle boarding and man we're just really stoked to have you in the studio and i know pete is super bummed i talked to him you know yesterday he was just a little under the weather and wanting to be you know you know i think i'm gonna come i think i'm gonna not and he just chose to play it safe and uh but i know he was really bummed because today is a day of a subject that's so close to his heart and that's talking fishing and surfing and kayaking and all the fun with you two boys so we're really we're really stoked to have you in here guys good morning Good morning, and I, I'm I'm sorry Pete couldn't be here because his his surfboard shaper is here. <laughs> Mark Johnson has built his uh, his surfboards for the last ten years. You know all of his stand up paddle boards, and he's like the one of the best guys at doing that. And among many of Mark's, uh, you know. Many skills. We call him the pocket knife because he can just do anything at Hobie. And uh, I, I, you know, before we go any further, we were just talking earlier about the inflatables that we sell. Yeah. One of the Hobie kayaks breakthroughs was how do we make a Mirage Drive kayak inflatable? 
and and fun and easy. Well, Mark's the guy who's doing all this and pioneering this with Hobie. And I got to tell you, that is one of our biggest sellers, and for many reasons. I hope we get a chance to to dive into those reasons today. Well, Mark, Mark's the one behind the scenes, right? That, yeah, that creates knife. it all. I, I have. To, uh, thank you guys for having me. Oh, Mark, we're, we're pumped. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is, is just we have a great team. It's a team effort always to uh, put together products, and we just we have a lot of fun. We test, we you know demo stuff, and we get it on the water, and all about function. Hobie seems to be so cool in that you're always coming up with new and better and always pushing the envelope. I mean, when Mirage Drive came out, how does it get better? And then there was Mirage 180, and then there was 360, and there was kick-up fins, and there was turbo fins, and like it's just an evolution. Like You look at the initial product and think, that's it? That's it. They did it. It will, Life will never get better than this. And you guys are constantly pushing. Like, I'm sure there's cool secret stuff that we don't know about right now that's, that's, that's going. I, I just uh, I think it's such a cool company. And it's not just – I mean, think about that one little product, the Mirage Dry Fins. And you guys make boats and kayaks and inflatable and hard and soft and big and small and cheap and expensive and perfect. Like, there's so much cool stuff that goes on at Hobie. We're, we're really pumped to have you. And, and what a cool – opportunity to talk to one of the guys that is pushing the design and the change and we're really pumped mark it's gonna be a lot of fun thank you i have a funny story about the mirage drive when it came out in 1997 launched it at trade shows all the industry came by and go that's the dumbest thing i've ever seen <laughs> well, you know what and i said before that you know i said why do we need that i said that right to greg yeah. kevin why do we need that and then and then i got in it and you're like oh my god the power that it has yeah. just it's a wonderful invention and there's been so the engineers have just gotten into more and more iterations of the mirage drive so it's just gotten better and better and better and then like you said the 180 was a revolutionary the kick up fins were revolutionary oh, that was huge, yeah, huge. Big time. Just, yeah and then the i just got on a 360 the other day I hadn't been on one in a long time and i was like oh my god the maneuverability that you have in this boat you can go anywhere at any time and basically revolutionized kayak fishing before the mirage drive kayak fishing was paddle 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 get your lure in the water Oh, I want to paddle, paddle, Yeah, try to do something before you're out of position. Yeah, now it's like your hands free. Well, if you fish in a mirage drive, you're fishing twice as much. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Because your hands are free. That's true. Ron was the first guy to get me on the water with the fishing, go fishing at the uh, The fishing fishing mission. And (laughs) it, it basically went out there for a day, caught fish. Had fun. The next day, I went back and bought an Outback. So, <laughs> you, you know, I own one ever you know, since. That's great. I, got, I, was I like, tell you, yeah, it's the great. engineers have thought about everything. This is the greatest yeah. fishing craft, human-powered fishing craft. We like to say, right? Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. We yeah. got to disguise our exercise with fun. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. That's <laughs> your middle name, Ron. I mean, that, your middle name is fun. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's funny about that that era of of when this was invented. It was all of a sudden kayaks were becoming you know like there's float tubes Mm -hmm. and float cats hobie made float cats they made little teeny catamarans like like, like, like a double pontoon that's right right. they they were feet long yeah they were fishing out of them and i sold a ton of those at the bart hall show or the fred hall (laughs) show i i couldn't believe it i had a a a sailboat in the booth and a a a float cat and all these crazy things and and they would just sell at that show because there's so many people and well the kayak comes out and just changes that that fishing you can move quick you can get to a spot well as you drift as you drift off the Mirage Drive can bring uh-huh. you right back, and you're still hands free. It's pretty well, game changer is the word, and it's game like changer. that's what Hobie's done his whole life. Yeah. Game change started shaping surfboards in '50, came out with the first uh, commercially viable polyurethane blank, which is the same foam that we use today. And, 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 and surfboard building. And surfboard building. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know the story. The funny story about that, that game is my little yeah, right. brother. One after another, my little brother had to surf. Because I had to have him carry the back of my surfboard. <laughs> I wasn't strong enough to carry my... My first surfboard was balsa wood. It was a hand-me-down. And uh, I couldn't carry the thing. So <laughs> Jerry had to surf. It took two Here, you get that it. in, I'll get this in. And we'd walk that thing. So, so even the balsa boards were extremely heavy. 
Oh yeah, so yeah. When, they okay. went to, when it went to polyurethane, it was like a game changer because of lightweight performance, like, like half the also, weight. Oh, easy, oh, yeah, easy. Like because the balsa ward's going to weigh maybe eighty. The 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 <laughs> the lightest ones, the ones that they picked and did yeah. the lightest yeah, ones, right. could get down to thirty eight forty pounds. That is crazy. And, but and that was rare. That's the most rare. Primo, yeah. 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 And and so the hand-me-downs all soaked up with water and oh, old and gotcha. glass yeah. too much. And, you know, <laughs> those things were 80 pounds. Like wow. super, super heavy. Yeah, and like all a, of this with Mr. Hobie was taking place right here in SoCal. Yep. In Laguna Beach. So, you know, you think about the, the beaches that we have from Laguna Beach. I mean, all the way to San, through San Diego, just some of the most epic yeah. um, surf spots. And, you know, at the time, so it's right out of World War II. He's shaping balsa boards out of his dad's garage in Laguna. And then he came up and he was glassing them. And what was that saying? Them. What was that famous saying? It was something about dad's got to back, you know, back, his, back his car out of the garage. So Hobie would go in there and shape balsa and he'd have just 100 pounds and pounds of shavings on the ground and Hobie's dad just goes I think you should probably get in business doing this because people are finding you <laughs> you know in this little garage and you know, on Oak Street Laguna Beach what it's a so rad crazy. story yeah. that is so right he, he uh, went out and they his dad bought a lot in Dana Point when Dana Point was nothing basically just PCH running through it and he opened up the first um, surfboard factory slash surf shop on Coast Highway. More, the oh, very first one. hangout. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can you imagine that character? Yeah, because, right? Because there's few people on the coast, coast doing it at the same time. Yeah, right. right. So there was uh, like Jack O'Neill up in, up in Santa Cruz. He was doing it. And Jack and, and uh, Hobie were friends. So it was kind of like a great like friendship. All the guys were friends that were in business for surfboards. You know, they all what a cool story like, built on each other, and they're all they all surf together, and it's just a he was a he they was all a they all competed over the lightest balsa wood. Yeah. It was who would show up at and that, then, and <laughs> yeah, and then so like balsa was happening until like fifty eight, so fifty seven. Hobie just kind of went into hibernation to create the polyurethane blank. So he opened up a shop in Laguna Canyon, and him and Grubby Clark spent the year perfecting the foam. And then after that, boom, they came out with polyurethane foam, and it was like another game changer, huge, because it was right right before the boom of surfing uh -huh. happened in 1964. And you know what the boom endless was? Endless summer, endless summer. What was the boom, Ron? Gidget. Yeah, Gidget. Oh. Gidget, endless summer. Um, Hobie really? Had a, Hobie had a big part in the, not a big part, like on screen, but he had something to do with, yeah, the, sure. with the movie. And they would, uh, him, Bruce Brown, Phil Edwards, um, oh, Mike yeah. Henson, would take the movie across the country in a motorhome and show it at local theaters. And Hobie would go along and he'd open up dealerships on the way to sell Hobie surfboards. So it was like this catalyst that just, just brought it all together. And that was the, the spark that lit it all. And the, Hobie the, was perfectly poised, poised, uh, poised because he had the blanks, he had the manufacturing. And so that at that point he was the biggest uh, surfboard builder in the world. That is it's incredible, amazing. And, amazing. And, and the most amazing part of the whole thing is it's all still happening in SoCal. Yeah. This is a company that's based right here. Yeah. I, one of the things I like to say is, you know, Hobie started in Balsa, so he started in the Balsa era. Yeah. But he's been relevant to a new generation in every decade since. Never stopped building surfboards, which. I don't know if there's anyone else that you can kind of say that about. I don't think so. Uh, but it's an amazing company to work for and just amazing philosophy that Hobie ingrained in us. I mean, if there is anybody else, it's really less than a handful of uh, I, I honestly, icons. I, yeah, really? for sure. I mean, yeah, it's like, like Belzy. Um, he was there in the Balsa era. Um, who else? I know some of the guys in the South Bay, but Belzy was one of them. Greg Thanks. Knoll. Yeah, Greg Knoll, then still, yeah, there's those guys. Then they were all pioneers, you know. They were watermen, and they just liked to have fun. They all went and, you know, went and conquered the big waves in Hawaii, you know, in, on balsa boards and then in foam. It was amazing. It's cool to see that that's where the roots of everything comes from, and that you know that it was it was make make a better mousetrap in the yep. '50s, and that is that, that has continued till today. Yeah, and I mean, I the know, technology that, is only, always pushing, and only half of it, you know. I mean, then it was like then he went to the sailing world, right? No, I think the skateboards. The skateboards were big, in the and 1960s. and one of our friends, all of our friends, that yes. I mean. Um, is this character and I, I I was snowboarding with him with Pete and fishing with him I had no idea it was John Freeze he won the first skateboard contest 
and Hobie was on. He was on the first Hobie, Hobie super, skateboard team. Hobie Super Surfer. Yeah, skateboard I didn't team. know that until yesterday. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I've known John forever, and he's and, in the book. Yeah, I go. had no idea. That cracked me up so much. And and then then it then of course it made sense. Like, well, how did you not know? But. Uh, you're right about you know Ron. You you've talked about it forever. You you always say that's the that's the fast lane motto is you sell fun and man that really is what Hobie did. Everything that was fun to do then, I, I again you know I I didn't know early on I didn't know that Hobie was just as big if not bigger with skateboard than it was you know on the water like I I, I had no idea he he changed. I mean I did because of you later on you know but but yeah, that's, yeah no he changed surfing he brought it into the modern world yeah. and and it, it's just like phenomenal what he did and then if you think a guy just did one thing but then he goes on to skateboards and you know what a rush that was that was like everybody's going sidewalk surfing mm -hmm. and then and then all of a sudden he changed the sailing yeah. industry amazing because pre everybody wanted to get a hobie cat yeah pre uh Pre-1968, when he came out with the cat, you know, it was like to go sailing was a big deal. You had to be like, a, you had to have a lot of money and be in a yacht club or right. something like that. Oh, you very, needed a blue blazer. It was very white, right. you no know, collar, um, but just like white sails. And then when Hobie came out with the Hobie cat in 68. Colorful as heck. Colorful. I remember. You know, a, like he, he dumped sailing on its head and he made it affordable and portable. Yeah, brought it to everybody. You could take apart a Hobie 14 and put it on the roof of your car and drive to any waterway and launch it and go have fun on the water. And How cool everyone is that? Knew I, that sounds a Hobie so, because of the colored sails. That sounds familiar. The sailing industry really needs to thank him because he got so many people into sailing and what did they right. do next? They bought the next bigger boat. Sure. It's called Two Foot Itis. I, I made a living <laughs> selling sailboats for many years and Hobie was really Instrumental, yeah, what, yeah, he's sort of like the Pied Piper of fun. Yeah, and that went just—it it was a spark that went worldwide like that because all of a sudden it was like, hey, we got two boats. What are we going to do with them? Let's race. So racing went worldwide, like every country. And racing not in or not in normal ways. It was just pickup races everywhere. Yeah. That's crazy. And, <laughs> yeah. and Mr. Hobie's philosophy. His really within the company and and like yourself, Mark. I mean, it, none of it has changed. Like it is the same pathway today yeah. as in the '60s. Yep. yep. You sold them your whole life, Ron. How, how you know? In addition to the you know the the original Hobie cats being portable and colorful and available for everybody, how how difficult. And or you know easy was it for somebody that wasn't a sailor to learn how to sail one? Like was it was it something that somebody picked up and instantly caught? Did you have to have a background in sailing to learn how to sail a Hobie cat? Was it Ho something Ho that anybody could just hop in and become Ho a sailor? Like Hobie cats were so affordable that even if something bad happened, wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. it wasn't really expensive. To know, repair. I remember or for, when we first started selling catamarans, they were nineteen ninety five on a trailer. Crazy. Done. All in. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about a two thousand dollar boat. Yeah. And and right now you could go on Craigslist and probably buy a Hobie sixteen for eight hundred dollars. Right. You know, and have just as much fun as we had back then. That's cool. But relatively easy for a person to learn how to sail. I mean, as a as a person that no, didn't... it's not really easy. But what it do, what it is is it's so fun and so addicting that you pour yourself into. Yeah, it. I got you. And and now. That when you say that, that model was not that easy to sail. Okay, you know, catamarans are a little different; they don't tack quite as well. Okay, but they made a boat, and this was later on. They made the Wave. It's a 13-foot catamaran, rotomolded plastic, and they're just amazing. Club meds have them everywhere. Every Every commercial you see with a beach scene, there's a Hobie in the background. Up on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. That's so all, funny. It, because they're all rental boats. So people go, I'm, I'm delivering a boat today, uh, a, a Hobie Wave, that I've been waiting for for eight months to get. And, and it's, it was sold eight months ago. Yeah. He's been waiting. And he sailed in Club Meds, sailing on Hobie Waves, and he wanted to buy one. And it's taken him eight months That's to so get fun, it. man. Wow. How cool. Yeah. How neat is that? I know. That's, it's pretty addicting. And, that, and then they've, uh, Hobie did something that I was blown away at, was they turned one of their smaller, fast boats into a trimaran. We called it the island, the Adventure Island. Mm -hmm. 
it just sold like crazy. I had 25 of them sold before the boat even came out. That's crazy. Now, it, you've referred to this book. Tell, tell us about this book, Ron. Well, somebody wrote a book about all of Hobie's adventures. It's a coffee table. It's, it's, it'll be your favorite book on the coffee table. Like a legit hard copy. Yeah, it's how, so how many pages? Super well I don't done. even know. It's, it's written written by Paul Holmes. An inch and a half thick. Yeah, Mark, you know more about it than I do. Oh, I just, the, the great thing about the book is Hobie was really good and had a lot of people around him that took a lot of photos. So there's document. a lot of documents. So there's a lot of yeah. cool documentation. And it goes from early surf to when surf boomed. Then it talks about the Hobie Cat story, skateboards, and then to our modern time, which Ron bought up the island. And you talked about how hard is it to sail. That's the most, that's the easiest, easiest boat, boat to, sail. to sail. It's super safe and a blast. Yeah, I, I, the, the Groms at my shop that are so hooked on fishing, Logan and Liam, Okay, the two Groms, they took out an island. I literally launched them at the ramp next door and said, go, we'll meet you at the Yacht Club for lunch. And uh, they took it out. They'd never sailed anything. Come on. They came in. They were frothing. They were having (laughs) so much fun. And Liam sold one this week. (laughs) <laughs> because oh, of awesome. his experience, he loved it so much. He was bubbling. Yeah, over. totally. So yeah. people go, well, "We got to get one." Yeah, I want some. Of, I want some of what he's got. That's right. That's awesome. That's right. And that's that's the I have an OB day. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. Well, as you can hear, we've got such a good show. We haven't even scratched the surface of what a great guy Hobie was. What a great company it's become. And you know, if you thought the history was fun, wait till we start talking about all the modern advancements. This is going to be a great show and a, a really good time, Corey. A lot of fun and having Mark. I mean, the, one of the head engineers in well, studio. I'm that, not a head. Engineer. Well, I don't. Know. How, how, how do we team. title you? I'm one of the team. One of part, part of the team, but yeah. the, but part of the cool team, right? I mean, that's. I mean, I've I've that, met you before, and you're yeah. a pretty soulful dude, and and to know that you're a part of the team, it, it's just pretty cool. And we talked about the book, right? So we're giving away uh, one of these books, one of these uh, coffee table pieces of like, almost called art. I mean, yeah, it's no a really doubt. cool story awesome. and a, a cool book to have on. We're giving away one to each uh, texter and a caller. So we're giving a, a, we're one, one, to flip a one coin, winner of the caller and texter you. side. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you. So unfortunately, not one to every person, but at the end of the show, we're going to compile all the texters. We're going to pull one winner. We're going to compile all the callers. We'll pull one winner. And each of you is going to have an awesome... I mean, it, 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 I, I couldn't agree with what you said more, Corey. It's, it's awesome. And it's amazing that it's there's such killer photography documenting every step of the way from back in the 50s. I mean, you just don't see that much black and white killer that just every little step of the way and all the innovations and all the cool spots. It's a it's an awesome book. Uh, Paul clearly did a really, really nice job putting it together. Uh, it's super neat and documenting Mr. Hobie's uh, complete journey. And yeah. So give us a call, 213-432-1090. That's the way on the telephone. Or you can text us via the app, only done through the app. Super cool download, free, easy. And if you missed last week's show, super neat. It's the way I listened to him. was Bill Varney, Surfishing and uh, uh, hearing uh, Dan Fuller and uh, Marcus Mead act in the studio, man, all the knowledge they have is incredible. So if you miss those, you can go on the app, and, and they're right there ready for you to listen to. And when we come back, we're going to have more from Mark Johnson, more from Mr. Fun, we'll call him, Ron Lane. Uh, when we return on the Let's Talk a Kabat, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Are you passionate about fishing and the great outdoors, but not quite sure where to go? Look no further than Queen Charlotte Safaris and pristine British Columbia, Canada. Hello, this is Valerie Hopridge. There's so many reasons to join us on your next fishing adventure. A few of the highlights are fishing in protected, calm waters. Very important. Quality Chinook salmon run all season long. After you've caught your salmon, we're going to go out for the great Pacific halibut, lean cod, rockfish, and dungeness crab. Our beautiful lodge overlooks Shingle Bay and Sandspit, and it's so easy to get to. Fly from almost any airport into Vancouver and then on to Sandspit. Fish process your fishing license, your gear, all included. Just bring that fishing arm and that smile. Let our chef pamper you with amazing meals while our staff gives you wonderful hospitality, all included in your Queen Charlotte Safaris package. Give me a call on our toll-free number, 1-877-815-2892, or go to our website, qcsafaris.com. 
Hey everyone, James Holst here with Norsk Lithium, the official battery partner of Let's Talk Hookup. Here at Norsk Lithium, we have two goals that drive who we are and what we do. The first is to make the highest quality, longest lasting lithium batteries available with a complete lineup of batteries that include 12, 24, 36 volt and starting batteries. Second, in addition to offering a 10 year warranty on all Norsk Lithium Marine batteries, we provide amazing customer service both before and after the sale. It does doesn't matter if you're looking to upgrade your current batteries tomorrow or a year from tomorrow. We're here to answer your rigging questions to get everything set up right the first time. Find us online at norsklithium.com, that's N-O-R-S-K lithium.com, or call us at 831-232-9063. Or to see Norse Lithium batteries in person, stop by the Trolling Motor Doctor in Lakewood and have Nick Wayne walk you through why Norse Lithium batteries should be in your boat. Here's the hot tip on the best fishing L.A. has to offer. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. They are home to L.A.'s finest open party fleet, including overnight on the Freedom, Catalina Freelance on the Pursuit, half-day trips on the Monte Carlo, and three-quarter day trips on the Sea Angler. For your own private charter, we have the Outrider and True Line available. There's always plenty of free parking and a fully stocked tackle store. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. Call 310-832-8304 or on the web at 22ndStreet.com. The lighter the bite and the cleaner the water means one thing. We need a thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader shy fish. With exceptional knot and tinsel strength, this advanced leader material is now available from 2 pound test for fishing trout in the Sierra to 80 pound test for big yellowfin in Guadalupe. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. Welcome! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And Rick, soulful, I think's the word, man. Fun, fun for uh, Mr. Ron Lane over there, and just soulful show all together. And if you want to join us, two one three, there is one open line two one three four three two ten ninety. It's yours right now, or text us via the app. Texts are coming through. And you got it, man. And make sure to, got to stress, if you send us a text on that Let's Talk Hookup app, make sure you include your contact info. Uh, the text the show uh, option through the app, it's a one-way system, so it's not uh, not the same as a text message on your normal phone. you got to make sure to throw your contact info because if you win that Hobie Coffee Table book at the end of the show, you're you're really going to want it. We want to make sure to get it to you, man. That's yeah, a really a cool yeah, book. Yeah, you guys killed it. Really, really fun. Well, speaking of the text, we got a great text standing by to jump right into this morning. It says, good morning, everyone. There's nothing quite like fishing from a Hobie, and Ron and the fam are hands down the best to work with. My question is for Ron. I'm looking to get into another PA-14 or possibly an Outback. Uh, do you only carry brand new boats? Have you ever carried gently used ones? Looking forward to the answers. That's from Ralph and Minifee. All right, Ralph, good call. Perfectly timed. Um, we were just talking about that. Um, Hobie's done something that that blew our minds. It's putting an across-the-board sale on all of the kayaks. Come on. Yeah, that's the first time ever. And this is a sale price, and I'm not going to talk about it over wait, the... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, Stop here. I want to I want to get this straight. The kayaks, the kayaks are, are all on sale. They're all on sale. So like, why buy a used one? We, right. do, we do have some trade-ins at the store. I know we have uh, a 360 12 that came in yesterday. There are a few other used ones, but everybody's jumping on this sale. And this sale is uh, until these numbers of boats you know, get down and they're going to keep this sale on. Wow. And so, so it might be for two weeks. Yeah, it, it might could be. be for four. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, so if you're looking wait. or shopping, come down to the store, call the store, and, and get in on this sale because it's, it's a huge sale, and this has never happened. I would say in the dozens of years that we've been lucky enough to know you're on, I don't think there's ever been new boats on sale before. There's been some gently used ones. There's been demos. There's been fun things. There's been trade show right, right. incentives. You're exactly right. But I don't think I've ever remember you guys having new boats at a discounted price before. Yeah, well, you know, this is, last few years has been kind of crazy. With, yeah, they finally got this new this new place. That, uh, Mark, you know the new. You've been down there, haven't you? Yeah. The new factory is just amazing. They have the ability to build boats like never before, and so they have some overages, you know, of 
of numbers. Sure. So they're they're motivating us. They're incentivizing us. They've got to move. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know who wins out of all that? It's it's Ralph. It's us. It's everybody Ralph. else. I mean, that's awesome. Yep. So Ralph, I expect you in there today. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe just as a quick rundown, Ralph was talking about possibly going. Uh, PA, the Pro Angler 14 versus an Outback. Uh, when you have somebody prospectively looking at those two boats, what are the reasons a guy makes a choice on one versus the other? And maybe give us a little rundown of what the difference is between a Pro Angler and an Outback. God, that's, that is that is the, the the question on the floor. That's the decision everybody yeah. has to make? Yeah. So the, the Outback couldn't be better. <laughs> okay. It's been built for 24 years. And it's been changed many times yeah. over that year. Finally, they they came out with a new one in 2000. I think it was 19, and um, it, the new model incorporated the sharp bow of the Pro Angler okay. and the Revolution. The, the sharper bow cuts through better, and it's got a big butt. It's got a big old back end, so you got a <laughs> lot of room, a lot of storage, a lot of stability. Okay, and so they made it a little bit longer. And it is a it's as good of a fishing kayak as you can get in. It's Pete's favorite. Okay. Uh, now, that being said, there are guys who want to drive around the Hummer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you get in the Hummer, it's comfortable. It's got storage. It's got capacity. I mean, that Pro Angler 14. There isn't a more comfortable boat. Right. Very nimble, fast. And stable, and it holds 600 pound capacity. Come on! So, I mean, you got bay tanks. You and yeah. you know, some of these guys go fishing. They go fishing with everything they own in it. <laughs> so, I, I would I would say that is the most difficult. Yeah. In shopping. But there's not a lot of difference in terms of performance. It sounds like it sounds like performance. Them both being nimble and fast and comfortable, but some if some you, storage. If some... you lean towards long days. Mm-hmm. Where comfort's an issue, who doesn't want stability? Totally right. And comfort, so that's what you're going to gain with the pro angler. You just mentioned long time in a kayak. The San Clemente Island trip two was it two years ago? What? How long was I in? The, I mean, I no, was, you, you. That was the year you beat Harry Walker. I mean, <laughs> come that's on, something right? I mean, twelve and a half hours. So yeah. what, what boat was I in? You were in the Outback. Okay, there Great it is. Boat. Great yeah. boat. Cool. I think the the common denominator is the Mirage Drive, right? Because oh. it's just so efficient. And one of the Jim Zarnowski, the head of engineering, he told me the philosophy behind the Mirage Drive that it was really driven from uh, the penguins' fins, and that was what his master's was at MIT. So he brought. I mean, it was Greg Ketterman who created it, but he came with it. And uh, it's it, he said to me one day, and it really stuck with me. It's like fins are the most efficient way to go through the water. That's what you see in nature, and that's the connection with the Mirage Drive in nature. And it is an incredible deal. I mean, it works, oh, and it's, it's so efficient so and fast, easy. So I have a funny story for you. Like Lake Barrett launched my kayak uh, years ago, and I had the uh, an older model with a you know with a you know, paddling around, and, and, and here's this guy kicking around. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to let this guy beat me. And, I, and I'm trying <laughs> to be so cool and act like I'm not putting all my effort. I'm digging forward, digging in, powering back, and trying to make it look smooth. <laughs> this guy so effortlessly. Just kicking my butt. Just blows by it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You felt kind of like a caveman. I, I felt kind of stupid for the minute. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I, I, I rem- it's just that competitive nature. <laughs> I, I can remember my same, the, you know, same story of when, like, I first saw a Mirage Drive happen. Yeah. And, you know, it was launching our boat to Launch Ramp in Mission Bay and seeing guys at Ron's place. And, you know, I remember, like, leaving the no-wake area that's inside the basin right there at Dana Landing. And the first time seeing a person at a pedal kite and watching them just absolutely fly by you. I mean, You're right. <laughs> it, just like you said, absolutely effortless. effortless. Their hands were at their side, in the air, on their phone, whatever it might have been, and just effortlessly watching this thing just zoop, zip, right. zip right by you. It's like that's, you know, you, that's Mark, to do it. you, you coined it game changer. It, it is. I mean, yep. there's, there's, no, there's no question. And it, 
you cannot deny for especially for us for fishing like your hands are free That's you're right. more mobile you're faster you're longer and your hands are free and it's, it's on it. target longer totally and and with all that being said it really i mean i know from doing both and i can tell you that by kicking by using your legs it's keeping you it's keeping the blood flowing through your body through the lower you're not getting worn out your back's not bothering you the yeah you're moving yeah yeah right. you're not have to stretch your Yourself. Right. right. It's not just your arms moving around, right? So it's it actually makes it more comfortable in the end, and I, I, the the seat makes it all too, you know. Oh yeah, those new seats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hey, his ears must have been burning right. because we were talking about it earlier in the show, and and uh, just another fun part of the Hobie history is another great fishing friend of ours, and that's our buddy John Freeze is on the line right now. Morning, John. Hey guys. Wow, what a surprise. Uh, talking about Hobie, Ron Lane's whole operation. Um, yeah. John, this uh, is... I can, I can say, uh, I, I mean, I know a lot of kayak people, but Ron is the most knowledgeable guy of kayaks and stand up by uh, those bull-up surfboards and everything, and he's, he's into it. So <laughs> if I was, was going to get involved with that, I'd go to Ron. He, he was the first guy. We used to fish out at La Jolla, you know, in the cold there, and, People started showing up there in kayaks years ago, and they were, you know, it was all about Ron and Lane. <laughs> yeah, thanks it was a lot. all about Hobie. Thanks a lot, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has been a little bit of a problem. <laughs> now, John, we were uh, having fun, you know, talking the uh, the origins of Hobie and you know how things have changed and you know how everything started. It started with the surf, and then it's you know then that morphed into sidewalk surfing in the skateboard industry. And and you were involved with Hobie all the way back then. Yeah, I, I was starting to see 1964, a million years ago. But then, let's see, then they had a, there was a bunch of contests and, and through the evolution of the sport. And uh, then they had one big final contest where Wide World of Sports was there. And uh, it was a big deal. So I was, I, I accidentally won the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> no, the funny not accidentally. That is, that's uh, that's well, unbelievable. 20 years, well, 20 years later, I'm in a skateboard shop trying to buy a skateboard for my kid. And I told the guy, uh, you know, I used to be the international skateboard champion. I was the first guy. <laughs> I the was guy the one. Said, I, yeah. I, th- so I thought I was Duke Konomoko of the whole deal. And he said, are you going to pay cash <laughs> or credit? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the last time I brought that whole thing up. But uh, it, was, it was a fun time. Hobie took us all over the United States. We went, uh, you know, everywhere. I was on a... Uh, to tell the truth with a real John Freeze, please stand up. Uh, so it, it was a real exciting 15 minutes. But, John, that's uh, Hobie, awesome. We had a um, an opportunity to recreate kind of the boards that you skated on uh, recently. So we did, did a limited edition 300 of the 64 Super Surfers. It was a really fun. Oh, project. wow. And uh, oh, good okay, to, Mark, good to wow. talk to you. Good to talk to you. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, it, uh, that was a, a fun time. I mean, Hobie did everything: uh, skateboards, surf, surfboards, gliders, catamarans, and then the, and then the kayaks. Uh, you know, sunglasses, he all kinds of stuff going on. Does Hobie still participate in in skate, or is it moved back just to all in the surf? Or it's it's all in the surf. Okay, yeah, we 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 make some limited edition runs from sure. time to a time, some but fun we're not stuff. like out there in mass production. Yeah, you had a great era well, the, run. The, and- the, 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 when I when I think of John Freeze, I'm always thinking of fishing. He's so addicted to fishing, and and he used to take, you know, he used to be a pilot that would take and fly his plane and find swordfish for what was it, Dewey Weber and some of those old surfers. But, but yeah, the uh, let's see. I think a, a ton of surfers. I was a surfer kid, and a ton of surfers ended up, you know, being in the uh, fishing industry. At the time, sword fishing was. Was a fun, pretty easy deal. I mean, if you fish from usually from nine in the morning till five, so but a lot of surfers. There's Lee Weber, have Jacobs, Bruce Brown, Mark Martinson, uh, Greg, all, all these guys ended up being fishermen. Crazy stuff. But I, I was one of them. And then when I finally got smart and uh, learned how to fly to become a spotter, uh, I did that for years. But while well, they're out there. Uh, Cleaning fish, getting all bloody. I was home in the hot tub, so it worked out pretty good. <laughs> it's all about being smarter, working smarter, not harder, John. Yeah, well, exactly. 
Well, I was but, in the but, shop talking to a guy about um, about John Freeze. You know, I fished with him, and I flew up to Mammoth with him on his little plane, and we went snowboarding. And uh, then all of a sudden, the guy goes, did he tell you about the balloon? And I go, what balloon? And he goes, oh, just go on YouTube and look at crazy lawn chair balloon flights. We don't have to get into that, Ron. Oh, <laughs> this is so. I think you're kind of calling them out, Ron. <laughs> this is so funny. If you got a computer, go look at it on YouTube. It, John takes and ties himself to a lawn chair with balloons and a BB gun. That BB guns for how you come down. <laughs> you shoot balloons. Yeah, way to go, John. My. <laughs> My wife is still well, wonders when I go fishing with you what I'm really up to. <laughs> <laughs> I got off the phone now unless you talk about kayaks. Yeah, rather than. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, John, an awesome, uh, an awesome, an awesome deal, and it's so cool to get to get to talk the days of Hobie and how much fun things were back then, and and it's still continuing now. And you know, and it's a, it's clear that everybody that's part of that Hobie team, like the you know the life of being around the water, it, it, it's that it's a lifestyle, and you certainly were whether. It was skateboarding or flying, you know, flying planes to find swordfish or taking your own boat out today to catch bluefin. I mean, when, when you know, that's that... tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, well, you're guess... going then. Well, good. Then I guess that means we'll see you in the tackle store today then. So, <laughs> yeah. okay, Rick. Nobody that knows more about, uh, I, I shouldn't even say this because you get, you get inundated with questions, but you are a wealth of information and knowledge. So I appreciate that. Uh, your help and, and and Corey, I've got to get a, a face to face someday with you. So, well, I know that uh, you know when uh, when Ron said he th- he hears John uh, John Freeze, he thinks about sidewalk surf, and I think Shorehouse Kitchen and Pizza Nova. So, <laughs> <laughs> we all think about something else, John. And uh, man, we sure appreciate you coming on and taking the time to to hang with us and talk a little bit about Hobie. And you know, if uh, you're the lucky winner of that great book, the you know the Hobie book that Paula put together, I know there's some cool stories about all the original original days and uh you being on the original skate team and winning the first championship and it's just a lot of fun buddy and uh always great to hear from you and i want to hear about a big bluefin in uh tomorrow all right thank you but i, but I thought you were giving away a kayak what did i call about it a book. <laughs> <laughs> well for calling you out on the balloon flight uh i think ron's just gonna yeah. go ahead and give you one so no problem yeah we'll, we'll make it right. <laughs> all right crazy well, lawn chair balloons well, always great to hear from you john appreciate it very much and we'll look forward to catching up real soon oh. Oh, some great right. conversation, man, for sure. Hey, we're in the world headquarters. We'll be right back with more of this awesome conversation with Mark Johnson from Hobie and Ron Laney, Mr. Fun. When we return on, let's talk like about the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. During Yamaha's Summer Sunset Sales Event, get up to five years warranty coverage on a boat package with eligible new 30 to 300 horsepower outboards. Make that six years with a Siren 3 Pro package. Or get up to seven years on a boat package with eligible 425 horsepower outboards. Purchase an eligible 2.5 to 25 horsepower model and receive up to a $300 dealer credit. Visit your Yamaha dealer today. Green September 8th, subject to change. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Select Models exclude 24-month Yamaha extended service added to factory. Limited warranty. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 24-month limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. Cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Offshore fishing is on. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. For bluefin, tuna, and yellowtail, nothing beats the Shimano Talica, the pinnacle of lever drag two-speed reels. Shimano Speedmaster 2 is also an extremely durable, high-performance lever drag reel for the more budget-minded angler. Both the Talica and Speedmaster 2 feature Shimano's Hagani body to prevent misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest of loads. For all your Shimano, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. This is Art Taylor of Searcher Sport Fishing. Join Captain Mike Totter, Chef Josh Evans, as a new era begins for Searcher Sport Fishing. Mike and Josh will continue the legacy of excellent customer service, fantastic food, and an amazing crew. Book your fishing adventure now online at searchersportfishing.com or call Celia at 619-226-2403. Searchersportfishing.com, 619-226-2403. 
It's time for the Power Pro 30 Second Seminar. I like catching big fish and I like smaller reels too. How do I make sure that I have the capacity to land the big one? I fill my reels with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro, so you get more line on that small reel. Power Pro has a complete series of highly effective lines, including the brand new Power Pro Depth Hunter Offshore with different colors every 100 feet. Perfect for flat fall fishing. Want to learn more? Check PowerPro.com. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150, available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150, test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. I gotta put a place All mark right, on welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup, and Pete. super stoked to be in the world headquarters today, Rick. I'm 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 so sad for Pete, but I'm stoked for me. Man. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, We're totally. having so much fun having uh, Mark Johnson from Hobie and one of the engineers, part of the engineering team, I team, guess we could say. Team, yeah, I'm not an engineer. You're right. Okay, well, you've got the mindset for it all, man. Part, helping do the whole thing there with Hobie and some incredible stuff and. I mean, having uh, Mr. Fun in here, too. No, no doubt, Ron man. Landing. We're having a lot of fun. And this portion of the show is brought to you by Dana Landing on Mission Bay. Ron knows his spot very well because it is truly your one-stop shop for everything that you need to go fishing. They have such a complete saltwater tackle shop, the awesome full deli, all the snacks and beverages, ice and boating supplies. And for all your freshwater and saltwater tackle needs, visit East County Bait and Tackle. Uh, they're at the end of the 67 Freeway at Maple View and Lakeside, plus the new Lemon Grove bait and tackle. All the stores are fully stocked with products and know-how for a successful time on the water. Dana Landing is right next to the lawn tramp across from SeaWorld and Mission Bay. Uh, Dana ECBT, as we said, they're at Maple View and Lakeside. And then the Lemon Grove bait and tackle, they're on Broadway and Lemon Grove. Check out DanaLanding.com for more information. What I want to know does the Alexa sandwich come before Debbie's cookies? <laughs> no, nothing over there, comes, Dana. Nothing no, we comes just go right Debbie's to cookies. Debbie's cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing <laughs> right. comes before that. That's for sure. I feel but the same. I, but I've had a lot of those sandwiches. <laughs> oh. Man, a really busy show this morning. And, of course, you mentioned before, 213-432-1090. We've got some very patient callers. We've got to jump into it. Let's do it. How about Roy? Roy Calm from San Diego. Good morning, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Great. Good morning. Hey, uh, Ron, a few years ago, I bought one of the, uh, like, the, the refur- refurbished uh, Mirage drives, the 180 kick-up fins and whatnot and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's been a few years, so I'm, what are the signs that I should start looking for to maybe start to uh, bring it in for service, you know, get it, you know, whatever the, you know, preventative maintenance stuff on it? Well, if if when you're using it, if it squeaks, you know, if you're getting a lot of, resistance or squeaking uh, it was funny I was up fishing up in um, Mammoth Lakes and uh, I, as I was pedaling by the you know the very quiet environment my Mirage Drive was going eek 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 and I was it was a little embarrassing you know paddling by all these guys in this quiet place and so I just took and poured water on the Mirage Drive in it Quit it squeaking, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you, you've got bearings in there, and those bearings can flatten out. Sand can get in, invade. So if you ever have questions about your Mirage Drive, bring it by Callan's at the store every day, and he's he's the wizard. He can fix anything. I can look at it. The guys all know about them, and if it needs our, to to get redone, we take it apart, regrease it, clean it up. New bearings? Well, we actually replaced the whole the you whole do. spine. Okay, I got yeah. you. But, but it depends. You can put new bearings in it, but if the bearings are worn out, why are they worn out? And so there's a little more to it, but it's it's easy for us to diagnose very quickly. Ex- expanding on that, Ron, there was a text from Rob in Oceanside that was just curious, what's an appropriate amount of time to come in for just a general maintenance? You know, fixing things or getting things serviced before there's a problem, or is it the type of thing where you just run it and take care of it and, you know, don't, don't worry about it, keep it going? Like what, a, a little of both. What's a, what's a good regimen for a guy like Rob? Um, well... You keep track of of every time you use it in sand and salt, and may, pay attention to hosing it off real good. That's the best maintenance. 
you know, just getting the sand salt out of it, off of it. And that's really easy to do. Now, if if you've run it for lots and lots of hours, and if you've tightened, retightened the chains many times, <clears throat> you may be wearing out bearings. Mm-hmm. So we can look at it. We can tell instantly. And uh, it is, <clears throat> is fresh water all you need? Do you like uh, the salt away ish type products? Is it soap and water? What's the best? What's the oh, best thing when you get home? Hey, you know, there's all these different degrees of spoiling your equipment, mm-hmm. and I'm the worst at it. So all I have time for is hosing it down. So I feel. And 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 I've I've watched you do take care of your reels. You're like me. Right. We just hose them down, and and if they get lucky, they get hit with the garden hose. You know, when we jump off the boat. You know. Yeah. And, I see some guys putting them all asleep, and they take the reels off. They put them in bed in a little velvet yeah. thing, and you know. They, and I have mucho respect for that. I, I do you know, too. I'm not talking smack. I love it. I just I, I do my too. gear's not lucky enough to get I, that I've, treatment. I've looked at some reels that are really old that look yeah. brand new, and my not that guy. Yeah. And you treat your hobie the same way. Yeah. Squirt it off with some fresh yeah, water. They're, you knock, built, they're built tough. You do what you're supposed to do. You respect it. You knock the salt and you knock the sand off of it. And Yep. The sand, And you know, a little bit of that is preventative. Don't pull your boat up on the beach and let it sit on the sand with the Mirage Drive in. Mm-hmm. Just unclick it and pull it out. We go, when somebody buys a boat, we go through those things. But when you're picking up a new boat, you rarely listen. You know, yeah, you're excited. you're excited. I get it. Sure, sure. He's telling me a lot of stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> give me my boat, man. There's, yeah, give yeah. me my boat, man. There's bodies that need to get caught here. That's right. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Well, hey, I appreciate the, uh, the the phone call and the text. Corey, let's jump back into the phones. Let's do it. How about Rob? Rob calling from Oceanside. Good morning, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate it. And thanks, Ron, for all the great stories. Um My question was also the text question on how you maintain your kayak. But my other question that I have is, like, what are the best places to fish for spotted bay bass on Mission Bay? Thanks for taking my call, guys. (laughs) That's a good question, and you are talking to the right guy. You know, I I was just out there with my um, on the new Hobie Fiesta. That's a a four-person boat. I had Fisher. Finley, Jared, Hayden, and me all on the boat. <laughs> oh, my oh, that's gosh. rad. Talk, oh. talk about a fiesta. Gra- Grandpa was in heaven. That's so cool. And there were rope and spotties, and we were yeah. just right off the Mission Bay Yacht Club, right out in the middle. And it was going off when the tide was moving, and then it just shut down. It just, I, I'd never seen anything like it. It was on, and there were, three of us were hooked up at one time catching spotties on mission bay and then uh and then it was just over and uh just like that yeah it was it was funny it was got much harder you know and you know finley's all of four years old or you know and he's uh he loses patience so pretty quick yeah. he's not catching we're in trouble we're we're, <laughs> we're so fortunate to have mission bay like yeah. mission bay is an absolute dream if you go up to like newport harbor huntington harbor and Long Beach and above, they're, they're, we don't have the eelgrass up there like we do in Mission Bay. I and, know, uh, yeah. Oh, it's I, you know that yeah. question it's was very like, sparse. Yeah, extremely sparse, and that, that's where that's where they live. That, they're yeah. they're designed. When you look at a spot of bay bass, those dark lines coming down it are made to blend mm. in with the shadowing of the eelgrass, yeah. and so that's their number one hiding spot, and that's where they're feeding. And Mission Bay is full of it. Yeah, it's the whole thing, don't you know? Like, yes. that's why you say, <clears throat> "Well, I was just in front of the yacht club in these big flats of grass that you know that that you know from the from the top side you just kind of look like you're floating in the middle of nowhere, but underneath you have this you know this you know this big prairie of uh, of, of you know of sea grass, and that fish is just down in there waiting to ambush bait fish that come over the top of it. And being in the Kayak, Rob's got the advantage, man. Just uh, go along Fiesta Island. You can launch anywhere at Fiesta you know, Island. And, and that question was, where is it good? Well, yeah. where it was good a few years ago, it's not good. Or last it week. It moves around a lot. Last week. I, I'm telling you, it it's, moves around. That, so, so being able to... One of the one of the key things we found is that if you get a little fish finder, it can be an inexpensive one. Keep moving until you see fish, 
than fish. The <laughs> other thing that you touched on that is, in my opinion, is the most important part of Mission Bay is, is tidal movement. And, you know, that bay is so tidal related. And, you know, you don't necessarily need a high tide or a low tide, but you need flow of tide coming. You know, going from low to high or high to low, not on the slack times. It makes such a difference. And the amount of water moving affects things. A huge tide, you can kind of hunker down a little bit. A real low tide exchange where there's only, you know, a foot of water moving if it doesn't make them act. But you get that three to five feet of water, and you're able to fish during that time of it exchanging from high to low. And it's, you know the water's flushing in or, or, or rolling it out of the bay, and it's just blowing all that crab and shrimp and stuff up off the bottom. Right. Those fish know, hey, this is this is the time that I'm supposed to be feeding. I'm supposed to be looking for food, and they just get into that mode. And you know all the all the little spotties that we we caught the, when they came up, we watched what came out. And it was all crab and, and snails. And, yeah, yeah, it was on the bottom. So everybody thinks that those spotties are looking up. They're not looking up. So get on the bottom and stay on the bottom. It's good stuff. I gotta ask hey, one slow last. pro. I gotta ask one last thing of the master. Now I know. See, we're all still favorites of leadhead, swim bait, calico bass, and and I know that you love. On the calico side, you're so much more like weedless fishing and slug fishing. Yeah. How about spotties? Same same idea. Do you like to to downsize but still use slug and weedless? Do you go back to leadhead and swim bait? Like, what's your what's the game plan for a guy you know like Rob that's wanting to get in some good spotty fishing? I'll give you a quick rundown. I love cleaner water, and the cleaner water inhibits uh, a visual reactionary mm-hmm. bite. Lead-headed slug and not burning it, but like a few quick cranks off the bottom and you create a reaction bite. But you have to have cleaner water, sunlight, and that kind of thing. If you don't have clean water and you've got a you know darker morning, then you go to the swim bait, okay. you know, lead-headed like that. Yeah. And, and what size slug and how heavy a lead-head? Well, I know it's a lot. Here's where it may blow your mind. Uh, the 5 and 6 inch is, is going to be like a standard, but I'm not afraid to throw the 8 inch at all, period. Like 8 inch for you're, spotties. You're and, crazy. But here's the thing. You're understand. Crazy. But understand the mindset, right? So there's jack smelt all through the harbor. Sure. 12 to 14 inch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An eight inch is an easy morsel. How often do you see those go to the bottom? They're always on the surface. So when one of those comes close enough for them to attack, it is a vicious bite. That's cool. And on top of that, don't forget about all the halibut. Right. Right? right. The end of the story. Well, I'll leave you with that. The cool thing about fishing a bait that big is the bite is completely different. You know, completely. when when you're fishing something that I more commonly fish, a, you know, I, I like the three inch than two and a half inch yeah. MC swim baits on a little darter head. It's bite friendly though. The, those are very bite friendly, but yeah. they're they're eating those. When something bites an eight inch slug, like you know, they, they have to kill it first. You know, it's like they're, they're they're super aggressive because they're trying to take down a bait that's bigger that just a little nip at the tail, that thing's yeah. gone. So the bite is just rip the rod out of your hands fun and so with that being said rick do not put trailer hooks and all this crazy stuff get the hook as close to the head as you can right because they're crushing the head thank yeah. you right. thank you good yes <laughs> that's cool hey, not right from the right from yeah, yoda from the source man no yoda. doubt hey a great text came through good morning guys uh so much fun awesome show learning about the history for those that maybe want to try to add a trolling motor to a hobie kayak which motor and battery seem to work the best that's from lance and 29 palms well the motors are trending they're even putting motors on skateboards. They're putting <laughs> motors on bikes. They're putting motors on kayaks. Everything's getting motors. Everything's E. But that's against what I like. Yeah. I like to disguise my exercise mm-hmm. with fun so I'll actually do it. But that being said, there's a lot of we sell the Bixby motors okay. and they've been really good for us. There's multiple ways to install them on the boat. You can use the Mirage Drive well, you can put them over the side, you can put them on the back. They're they're very versatile. And and some some of the older guys that um you know, that have Student health assist. issues they they it, they feel safer. Their wives like it better when they're out with a motor, and they got to get back. Yeah. Uh, Chris Minnick even has a motor on his little i9, and he, he called me excited that it 
it started raining on him at the back of the lake, and he had to get all the way to his car, and it was a two something miles away, yeah. and that motor just got him there real quick. And he goes, "Man, that worked good." That's cool. so. There are reasons for motors. Yeah, the, the, like and you, that was that was a perfect uh, that was a perfect description. It's the beauty of you don't need to have it. The Hobie makes the best boat that doesn't need a motor, but if your situation calls for it, it can be adapted. Yeah, yeah. Well, safety reasons are always you know. That's cool. Yeah, it's all good stuff. Hey, we're going to be right back. I can't believe one hour is already gone, right? We have a whole nother hour ahead of us, though. Mr. Mark Johnson from Hobie and and Mr. Ron Lane, I call him Mr. Fun. When we return on, let's talk about the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Want to take your catch from fresh to superior grade? This is Robbie Gant from AFCO. We developed a tool for the EKGMA process. Circuit Breaker is specially designed to disable the full length of the fish's spinal cord. The memory-resistant wire of AFCO Circuit Breaker will not bend or kink, even after repeated use. Take your fish care to the next level with Circuit Breaker by AFCO. Available at a dealer near you or check out AFCO.com. Like Robbie said, take your fish care to the next level with Circuit Breaker by AFCO. Check AFCO.com or your favorite tackle retailer. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero was awarded the Certificate of Excellence from TripAdvisor for four straight years. Especially interesting, most hotels are just hotels, and most people stay in the hotel and go do their activities elsewhere. Rancho Leonero, of course, provides fishing, diving, all activities, all meals, your whole vacation. So the fact that we're so highly rated, we're very proud of it. From picking you up at the airport to dropping you off, literally everything is a turnkey from there. We make it as easy as we can for you at the ranch. From your meals to whether you're going to go fishing or diving or just hang out by the pool. When you're coming to Ranch Lanero, you are coming to John Ireland's home. I guarantee the best fishing vacation experience in all of Baja. It's unique. There's nowhere that I can think of to get the same experience that you get at Ranch Lanero. Our new reservation phone number is 800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchLanero.com. It's really unique. It is. We're very proud of it. This is Captain Brandon Nelson from Lucky Bee Sport Fishing. Our dynamic fishery here on the West Coast is home to some of the most iconic game fish that swim the salty world. We demand tools designed to perform flawlessly and deliver the upper hand in any situation. That's why I use and recommend the all-new G. Loomis IMX Pro Offshore Series of Rods. It's a full lineup of purpose-built 20- to 80-pound class rods. I have been fortunate enough to be working with G. Loomis on the IMX Pro for some time to help develop the actions we need here on the West Coast and they nailed it. The G. Loomis multi-taper design technology adds material where the blank is likely to fail and subtracts material where it won't. A C guide train and Fuji reel seat complement a battle on grip that offers extreme fatigue fighting comfort. They have been helping my passengers on Lucky Bee Sport Fishing land some amazing fish and now they are ready for you. The new G. Loomis IMX Pro Offshore Rod Series at your local Shimano or G. Loomis dealer. When it comes to fishing rods for salt water, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take for example the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state of the art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. Spring 8 day, summer 5 day, or a fly down, fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. 